Okay, so um, this is Jacob Proctor um, in Brooklyn, New York, and I'm interviewing Morgan Fisher in his home in Los Angeles uh, for the Smithsonian Institution Archives of American Arts Pandemic Project. So thank you, Morgan, for, uh, for speaking with me. Um, the last time, last time we saw each other in person was right before all of this COVID uh, really, it was kind of bubbling away somewhere else. And it was right before everything really um, came to a head. So it's nice to see you well. Um, how's it been going since, you know, March? Uh, well, for the world, not so well, but for, but for me, in my immediate personal life and in my uh, professional life, well, in my personal life, wonderfully well within the special circumstances that now rule us. But my professional life is, um, it's very much constrained. Um, I, I've had a studio very seldom. Um, and now, um, even to find a studio, I would have to, <clears throat> I have to be out of the house to find one and deal with people I don't really know to have to find one. And it's not as if uh, I'm so overwhelmed with ideas that I must realize that I feel I have to go find a studio so that I can do some work because I tend to do work in relation to the opportunities as they come to me because a lot of my work is at least the painting work is done in relation to architecture um, so I need to know what the specific setting is and then sure. the work is in some way or another a response to that and there have been no such invitations so there have been no such opportunities and there have been no no such needs to have a studio to do the work. But anyway, if there were opportunities, it's more than likely that I would turn to others to actually do the, the, do the fabricating. Mm -hmm. that's, what, that's what happened with the show I had at Bordelami. Um, I had the idea for the show sitting right here on this very sofa where I am now sitting. And I, and I after the initial, idea which was to do paintings that had uh, irregular here can you see my hands like ir irregular contours that faced each other such that you could think of the spaces between my hands or the space as a part of the work mm -hmm. so that so that these irregular contours would implicate uh, the space between them uh, within the understanding of the work that was the idea and I had the idea of sitting right here. And then I worked the whole thing out probably in about half an hour, or maybe an hour. On paper. And then, it, which, I mean, it, it all came very, very quickly. And then I was able to do drawings on, <clears throat> on the computer. I had to find out from Stefania Bordolami what, what, uh, what the lengths of the walls were, uh, the two facing walls. and. It, and then I center the drawings and, um, and the show happened. And the work was fabricated in New York. I, I bought the paint here. So I went to a, a commercial paint dealer where there was a guy who would mix paint who was very skilled. And the, I bought the paint here. There were six cans um, or six colors, maybe two cans of each. And they went on by New York on a, I went to New York on a truck and a man in New York did the fabricating. <clears throat> so I didn't see the work until two days before the, the show opened, but I had a grasp of what it was in its entirety, a conceptual grasp as well as a grasp in detail. But the point is that someone else did the work, someone else did mm -hmm. the work. So there could be work like that, but even for that, there would have to be uh, an opportunity, and they're having, yeah. but that's and, okay. that's that's you know someday there will be more opportunities, but um, and there's another kind of work that I had been doing, which was photographs. But I was working with a photographer who uh, has a 
e extreme skill. It's essentially tabletop photography. The subject is books. So I was working with this guy on this large, large group of photographs of books. And um, we were interrupted when, um, when Margaret and I had to travel to go to Europe in February and March. Uh, and then I would have resumed, except that we have been in lockdown uh, ever since a day or two after we got back. We got back on March 10th. And I think the lockdown began a matter of a day or two later. In any event, very soon after. So there is, there are more photographs that I would like to make working with this guy, but it re would require that I be mm -hmm. in the studio with him. And um, it just doesn't, it's, it's something I would rather not do. I don't, I, I can't run the risk of, so there's that body. So unlike paintings, which are not, it's not as if there's, it's not as if there's an, it's not as if there's an opportunity that is waiting to be fulfilled by the execution of the paintings. But the photographs, it's different. They're not yeah. made for a specific setting or a particular yeah. occasion. So I can make more, but not now. Right, so oh, you're just yeah. stuck. You're just kind of in a holding pattern with that I'm until... In I'm in a holding pattern, exactly. However, sitting on the sofa, I did get an idea for a new film. Oh. Um, and I'm... <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I can't shoot it now for a couple of reasons. First of all, it would require working with the 30, well, because I don't have access for the same reason I can't work with, uh, the photographer. I couldn't work with the people that I would need, whose help I would need to shoot the film. Uh, it, I want to shoot it on 35. So I would have to rent a Panavision camera and, um, I would have to work with a director of photography and a sound recordist and a production assistant and um, on a stage. Well, that would all have to be arranged. And, um, but there are a couple of, of older ideas for films that I could do at the same time. And I hadn't ever gotten around to doing those because they both involved writing. So I had to be happy with what I had written. Um, and I kept wanting to make revisions and so forth. So I kept putting off doing the shooting of the film for which the idea is the oldest. And then there was a more, there was a, there was another idea. And I thought, fine, I'll, and which involved writing. And I've pretty much written that, but no doubt I will want to change it. Uh, and I thought, well, fine, I can do those two films on the same day. They're both single take films. They're just sure. single take films. But I would be performing. I would be reading something. And, and I'm not, I would not be making it up. I, it has to be very precise. So I have to, I have to be happy with what I've written. Um, and I don't know about you, but uh, it's very easy for me to be less than happy with what I've written. And so, so... It's always easy to put off because I think, well, it'll get, if I let it sit, it'll get better. I'll find a way to make it better. Um, so that, that was already two films that could be shot on the same occasion. And now there's a third. So I, again, it's a single take. Um, but the writing is much more technical. So the writing for that is much easier. And I think I've actually come very close to finishing that writing. So someday when our troubles are over, um, I will be able to rent the camera. I have to go to Panavision in Hollywood, rent the camera. I have to pay insurance, which has to be done independently of renting the, the, the people. Panavision, you can't, get insu you can't get insurance through them. You have to get it separately. And then I have to go to a stage, which in fact, someone has arranged for me to have access to. And there is a director of photography who will volunteer his efforts. I just hope he still has an affiliation with the studio and he's still <laughs> drawing breath when the time comes. We have nothing to take for granted. And then I'll be able to do these 
three films. Uh, and all of them, it's just me talking. I'll be hoarse by the time I finish the last one, but so what? But um, so, but what I can be doing now is working on the catalog for the show at Red Cat, which I had a couple of years, <laughs> a couple of years ago. But there have been some difficulties with the catalog and I have the opportunity, let's call it, uh, to play a part in actually bringing the whole thing to fruition such that someday there will be something we recognize as a catalog out there in the world. So in, in that sense, so, so being in lockdown and almost never leaving the house is for me, at least in that respect, in the, in the sense that it gives me the time to work on the catalog has been a good thing. Have you been, have you felt the sort of, I mean, it's interesting because, you know, because so much of, I mean, in order, other than the writing parts, it's in order to actually realize so much of your work, it rely, relies on the expertise and participation of other people and other, you know, in lots and lots of different ways. As you were just saying, like, have you been in touch with, with, you know, with some of your kind of collaborators and having a sense of what they're uh, kind of how they're feeling? Um, or has it really just been like a kind of isolation uh, well, period? Um, I'm afraid that my answer might make me seem unfeeling or uncaring about other people, which is not the case. I'm a, I'm a caring kind of guy. Um, I've been in touch with the photographer and he understands my situation perfectly. Um, uh, so, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's really a case of just needing to just wait until yeah, it's yeah. safe, essentially. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Martin, yeah, the photographer's name is Martin. I mean, Martin understands. It's like, right. uh, I mean, it was really fun to work with this guy. We would, there were many, many days in the studio and you know we would go have lunch and then come back and work some more. It was really fun. He's a really easy guy to work with. He's very, you know, personable. But we can't work and he understands that. So it's not as if I need to sort of keep the relation mm -hmm. alive, so to speak, in the meantime. Now on the film projects, uh, one of my collaborators is um, my wife, is someone I'm married to. So uh, so uh, I, I see a lot of her and um, I think she'll be willing to help me when the time comes. And um, uh, the two other collaborators are people I'm otherwise in contact with um, for other reasons. Like one of them is uh, works at the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences archive. And I'm in touch with him for other reasons. Mm -hmm. But actually, now that you mention it, I should ask that guy about whether the cinematographer will still be available to help out when the time comes. And, um, but, but thank you for reminding me. I should, <laughs> I, should, I, should, I should do that. I mean, this is, this is one of the, can I just go on a bit about this? It's a little peripheral to what you're saying, but I'm reminded of it. One of, to me, one of the very, very unfortunate things about the pandemic and about what it seems to have brought about in terms of social interaction is that um, it doesn't seem to occur to people to check in with one another, at least not in my circle. It's like, well, gee, I mean, Margaret and I have talked about that. I mean, Margaret and I actually have social conversations with, with uh, you know, with, with, on, on Facebook or, or FaceTime or face zoom or whatever it's called <laughs> and, um, and we really really enjoy them but they're entirely but they're social relations although, although as it happens um the people we do this with are most of them are also artists um so it has like a professional quality to it but um yeah i mean there are people i know i won't mention any names it's like well gee it would really be nice to know how they're doing yeah. But on the other hand, I would like to think that they're thinking exactly the same thing. But it, it's like, well, 
if I feel that way, then they might feel that way or should or could or, and if so, why, why aren't we talking to each other? But I mean, what we haven't gotten to yet is what is truly unhappy about the present situation is that there are no openings. Mm -hmm. You can't go out and expect to see people and catch up and just have the kind of casual social interactions, which to my mind are an absolutely crucial part of a professional life. It's not just about doing work or writing about your work or um, you know, defending your work in some abstract way. It's about you know, getting out there and you know, being in that world and seeing the other people who are in that world. Margaret and I have not been to an opening since March 10th when we got back. And um, so there are all these people whom we know and like, mm -hmm. and we have not seen them. And some of these people are people that I would be, that I have a relationship with just outside of the casual relationships of going to, of seeing them at openings. I mean, I would consider them friends. And you see um, them every month. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. But um, yeah. So that's something I truly, truly miss. I mean, really, and I think it's it, it's a great. I mean, to what extent this might be damaging to the you know to the to the art world as we know it. To the I just I have no idea. Yeah, it's a really interesting point actually because I feel the same thing, and I've actually I have been to a few socially distanced mask masked. Uh, you know, very low, uh, low capacity openings. Um, and it's really different. Uh, even for people that you, uh, that you are close with already. Yeah. It's a very, and I think it's interesting that you say that because, um, because it is a very, it, it's an important part of being, um, for a lot of people, I mean, obviously for you of being an artist is part of part of that is being part of a, a community or a scene um, in a way, even if you don't put it in those terms, but it's about being a part of a group that has a shared, um, you know, it's like an affinity group. Yeah, and exactly, what, exactly, yeah. And it, it's, it's not just about, you know, being like a scenester or making the scene. It really is about, you know, as, as you confirm to others that they're in this world, they confirm to you. And, um, you know, they, they, so it's this re relation of uh, reciprocity through just being in each other's presence. And that's, that for us has vanished. I don't know when we will ever go to an opening ever again. You know, maybe not until there's a vaccine. I don't know. Yeah, that's a very sobering. Um, it's a very sobering thought, you know, that because I, do, I you know, because I, I don't think any of us really know. But yeah, I mean, really, and one of the wonderful things about openings is how unpredictable they are. You yeah. don't know who will show up. Yeah, and someone that you, someone from, who you would be really, really glad to see, and it would never enter your mind that they would even have heard about the show and then show up. It's, yeah, yeah, it's, um, yeah, you know, like walkthroughs in galleries, you know, being invited to give a talk in a museum show and then they, the museum publicizes it. So people that you, it would never occur to you to tell about you're doing something like this, show up. And it's like, oh my gosh, and you're so happy mm -hmm. to see someone. Uh, <laughs> and somehow the the the, the Zoom um, the community no. the communal experience of Zoom is not that. No, yeah. no, it isn't. Yeah, there, there aren't any surprises on Zoom, are there? Or I mean, maybe that's it's possible in theory, but yeah, it is possible. I think it is possible in theory, but I have not seen seen it either. Oh gosh. Yeah. Um, yeah, what are what are we going to tell? I mean, what are people going to think, you know, a hundred years from now when they look back at this moment in, you know, in the sort of the art world and in, in the United States around the world? 
Yeah. I just Got I just, that. I just don't know. Oh, you haven't asked this, but I I feel it's okay to bring it up because it's related. Um, I was invited to be in two film festivals uh, late last spring, and I had committed to going to both of them. Yeah. So um, we would have come home from Europe at the end in, in early March, and then um, then 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 we would have gone back. We would we would have gone back to Oberhausen, mm -hmm. uh, and then we would have some time in between, and then we would have gone to a film festival in Spain. And both the events were canceled. And um, it's a very great shame because the event at Oberhausen was basically like a retrospective, which I was very loath to miss out on. And they asked me, and, and, and um, oh, furthermore, I have a very old painting, a painting as a single object, contrary to my now current tendency. I have a painting I made that I made in 1963 or four in a show at the Museum of Contemporary Art in Rome. And originally, Margaret and I had thought we would go back to Europe, there would be Oberhausen, and then the, the, the film festival in, in, in Spain, and then we would go to Rome and I would give a talk. Well, for, and the two film festivals were canceled. The opening for the, in, in, the opening for the show in Rome was postponed. Um, I mean, I would have given a talk if uh, on the original schedule, I would have given a talk like the first, the first week after the show opened. Um, none of that ever happened. There was an opening, but it was in earlier, it was either in late July or in August. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to see the show. I'm not going to see the show. And it's just, it's so, so sad. I've seen photographs of, of the installation of the show. It's extremely ambitious. There's work of all kinds, all you know, different scales, different, you know, modalities. There's installation, sculpture, text. It looks like an absolutely amazing show and I will not see it. And that just, it makes me so sad because among other things, showing up as a way of expressing your gratitude that this curator put you in the show. Well, all I can say is to the writer, yeah. you would write an email to the curator and say, it looks like an absolutely beautiful show. Thank you so much for including me and I only wish I could see it. But that's not the same as showing up. No, no, it is not. But I think it's gonna be a while before we can all show up again. Well, thank you um, for taking the time to, to talk with me and to sort of give us a sense of how it's going. Um, so we really appreciate it. Have I said enough, Jacob? I mean, I could... yeah. <laughs> Jacob, thank you.